You have probably played this game before with your friends and now you have a desire to make it or maybe your university requires for you to make this game. So today I'm going to show you how to create a tic-tac-toe with the graphical user interface using Java. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As you could see from the introduction, this is how our game will look like. We'll also follow the basic rules of the game and that will help us when creating and designing a project. The hardest part of this project is not the code, it's the setup. All the methods, variables, constructors and all that stuff that you need to do first before diving into a project. So before writing the code, I want to first clarify what to do and why. Of course, if you just want to see the code, you can skip this part in the timestamps. Each game must have a player mark, and that is an X or an O representing the player. We also have to have nine buttons that will represent the fields in which users will input their player mark. Then we have to initialize those buttons and reset them when we start a new game. We also have to check for a win or a draw. We have to display the winner, or if it's a draw, we have to say it's a draw. And lastly, we need to implement some basic graphical user interface methods so this all can work. And now let's start programming. So you want to create your first project and uh, any package that you want. And then what you want to do is create a class. So you just right click your package, go to new and Java class. You can name it anything you want. I named it TTT game. And once all of that loads up and you are in your Eclipse all ready to go with your first class, you need to say that we extend JPanel. If you don't know what this does, this basically means that our class will be a subclass of JPanel and we can use JPanel methods to create windows and to create our actual graphical user interface. So this is basically how you start a program in Swing. And as I was saying, our game has to have a player mark. We'll use a character to store the player mark and we will always initialize it to an X because an X always goes first. We need to set the buttons. As you can see here, we create an array of J buttons and we will have nine of them. In here, in our constructor that you call when you start the game, we will just set the layout to a 3x3 three three matrix or a window that has places for nine buttons. So 3x3, three three, as you can see here, and we call our initialize buttons method. And now I will explain how our initialize button buttons method works. So since we have an array of nine buttons, we need to go over each one. And for that, we need a for loop. So we go into a for loop that will loop nine times. And for each button, we create a new one. We set its text to dash or you can type whatever you want. You can also use an empty string. I've decided to go with the dash. And then we set the background color to white or whatever color you want. So for each button, this will go over nine times. So we go zero, one, two, three, and so on. And then we create an action listener for each button. Now, action listener is a method which you call upon a button when when the button is pressed. So this method always waits for something to happen with the button. And when that something happens, we record that event with an action listener. And then this method is called the action preferred method. And inside here is our code for the tic-tac-toe. So before this, everything, everything is basic swing. And now in here, we get the source of the event and we save it into our button so we know which button was clicked. As you can see here, this line gets the particular button that was clicked. And then we want to change the text 
of that button to a player mark. Now this part is really important because essentially what it does is it does this. So as you can see when we press the button we set the text to a value of player mark and we set the player mark to X. So the first time I press the button the, the dash changes to an X. This, this part of code does just that. And then if the player mark was X, we shift it to O because we want to we want the other player to play. And this line of code says so if if player mark was O, we change it to X. And in here we just change the background colors, so every every player has the different background color. As you can see the X is blue and the O is orange. Then, after each player has set their moves, we always display the victorious player. And I will explain that in a bit. And after we've done all that, so after we performed our tic-tac-toe action, we just need to add those buttons to the screen, as you can see here. So this part is for our tic-tac-toe and uh, this part and this part is just basic stuff of adding buttons to the screen great we now have buttons on the screen and you can press them and do some operations the last thing we have to do is check for a winner so we need to have a code that checks each row and each column and checks for three x's or three o's and we also need to check the diagonals as you can see here we have a display victor here so it's not a guy named Victor it's just displaying the victorious player and once we come to this part our code shifts to this method okay and now once we are in here the first thing we do is check for the winner and again we exit the display Victor method and go to check for winner as you can see here here is our check for winner method in here we go to three other methods check rows check columns and check diagonals so again we exit this method and first we go to check rows as you can see on the screen right now our buttons go in this order 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 7 8 and that is exactly what we do in check rows as you can see here, we have two variables. We have i and j. First, first loop, we go to 0. So this will be our first button. This will be our second button. And then we check our first button with the third button. So this is button 0. This is button 1. This is button 0. And this is button 2. This is how we check the first row. And we also must make sure that our button so when we take text from the button and convert it to a character in this line it has to be different than a dash so it, it can either be an x or an o we don't care but it can't be a dash this part here is really important otherwise your game won't work so to clarify we take the first button we get the text and we check it with the second button and then we get the first button and check it with the third button. After that, when J shifts to 1, as you can see here, we bump the I up for 3. So this here won't be 0, it will be 3. This here will be 4 and this will be 5. As you can see on the screen, this is the exact layout of our buttons. And then we do that for the last row as well. In check columns, we do exactly the same, but in a different order. First, we check 0, 3, 6, and then the other buttons. As you can see on the screen in our layout, first we take 0, we take 3, and we take 6. And then after J goes to 1, we just shift I by 1. And then in here it will be 1, 4, and 7, as you can see on the screen. 
and it is the exact same code, we just shift the order in which we search. And check diagonals is hard coded, which means we always check the same diagonals because there are only two. So we need to check button zero with button four and button eight. And it all must be different than a dash. And then in the other one, we check the other diagonal, which is two, four and six, as you can see on the screen. So this is it sounds hard to check diagonals, but it's really simple. So after we check diagonals, we check columns and we check rows, we get back to our check for winner method. In here, we return through if any of these conditions is true and we return false if none of these conditions happen. And then we return that result to our display victor function. So by now your players can enter an X or an O and we can check for a winner. Now we need to stop the game when we have a winner and this function display victor serves just for that. So if the check winner is true, first we need to reverse the player marks because after we put an X and we win, the game changes it to an O, but the X is the winner. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, if the X wins, we need to keep the X player mark so we can print it out on the screen. And then in here we create an option pane, I will show you. So when I win this code, this code right here is, is the code for this window. So we print game over plus player mark X wins. Would you like to play again? And we store the dialogue result in this variable called dialogue result. And if the option is yes, we reset the buttons, which I'll show you right here. And if the option is no, we just exit the application as you can see. So this is all basic swing stuff. This is how you create that little window using J option pane and in here you put your data. So this pane we created is right this. We type our text game over player mark wins. We'd like to play again and we store the result in a dialog result. If the answer is yes, we reset the buttons and if the answer is no, we exit the application. But what's the other thing that can happen in tic-tac-toe? We can also have a draw and now I will explain how this method works. So if a draw happens, we enter this line of code, which is basically the same thing over here, but with a different message. We just say draw play again. And if they say yes, we again reset the buttons. And if they say no, we exit the application. But the important thing happens in here. And now I will explain just that. Okay, this is our check draw method and in here we check if a draw will happen. We use a simple proof by contradiction. Here we assume that the board is full of X and O's. And then we enter a for loop. We check every button, every single button and check if it's equal, as you can see here, oops, to a dash. And if it is equal to a dash, we say full is false because the board is not full. And how do we know that the board is not full? We know because we just checked that our button is equal to a dash, which means a player can actually play. We return full. So if none of this is equal to a dash, we return true and the draw happens. But if any of the text is equal to a dash, we can still play the game. And that's it for the check draw method. As you can see, it's pretty uh, simple. And now comes the finishing part, the reset buttons, and we need to explain how to actually put the window on the screen. But first, let's explain the reset the buttons. So basically you go over every button and you change the player mark to uh, to an x actually we don't need to do that in the loop 
we can actually do that before the loop. And then inside the loop, we just set text back to a dash and the background color to white. So as you can see here, when we save and run, you play and then when something happens, okay, or one would like to play again, you click yes. And as you can see, everything goes back to white and everything goes back to dash. That's this part. So this code does just that. As you can see here, when something happens, so it's a draw, play again, yes. And everything goes back to white and everything goes back to dash and you can again play. So it's a pretty simple code to reset the board. And that's great. Your game now works. All the logic behind the game works. You just need to put the stuff on the screen and you do that pretty simple. You, okay, I'll run it and show you. So this code over here adds a new window and we add the title. As you can see here, this text is this text. The second part just adds the default close operation to exit. So when you press this button, you close the application. This part over here, get counted pane, just adds the stuff to the screen. As you can see, these buttons and all that stuff. Set bounds is where you increase or decrease the area. And then set visible through means you show the window on the screen. If it was false, you wouldn't see anything. And set location relative to null just centers it. As you can see, every time I run it, it's in the center of the screen. And you do this in main. So when you run the app, this code, this code actually happens. And then from here, we call everything else. Congratulations, your game now works and you can show it to your friends, your family and play with them. As you can see right here, I'm playing with myself, but you can play with other people. That's it for today's tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will try to explain you once again. And enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed this one. Subscribe because I will be making more and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.